In the gospel today, Jesus makes a distinction. A distinction between the way God thinks and the way man thinks. The thoughts of God and the thoughts of man. The context was the prediction of Jesus about his own passion and suffering and death. Very clearly, Jesus predicted that he would be betrayed and condemned and crucified. Simon Peter could not take it because he loved Jesus. How could he take it that his master, beloved master, would be condemned and crucified? He could not understand. He said, oh no, that did not happen to you. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking as God thinks. Your thoughts are not the thoughts of God. Your thoughts are merely human. So human that it is even satanic. Get behind me, Satan. What does that mean? A mere human thought can even be devilish. And what is devilish? A thought that takes us away from God. And often our thoughts about suffering are not divine. Are not divine. We are not able to find an element in suffering. And therefore, suffering takes us away from God. A lot of people, when sufferings come their way, they turn away from God, don't they? Why did God do this to me? Why did God do this to me? Suffering has become a terrible scandal. I believe in God, and yet... God did this to me. Someone made a retreat here and they went away. They were driving a car. On the way, they met with an accident. The man was injured. The wife also was injured. They were admitted in a hospital. And the man phoned me up in anger. Why did God do this to me? Why did God do this to me? We were returning after a retreat. God should have protected. God should have protected us. And therefore, the God who allowed this accident after a retreat is not the true God. He shouted. Well, I spoke to him. I tried to speak to him calmly. He was not convinced. Later, I went to him to the hospital. He was in the hospital only for two, three days. And yet, he was so scandalized. I told him, my friend, God the Father loved the Son so much that what God the Father gave him was a cross. Send him to the world. And the cross fell on his shoulders, but raised him up on the third day in glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You and I shall understand mental anguish and physical torture are bound to come our way. But you and I, if we believe in the Lord, we trust in our God, our sufferings, will not break us. Our sufferings will not destroy us. We will have to walk the way to Calvary, but this way will not end in Calvary. This way will proceed further to share in the glory of Easter. What Simon Peter said 
in the in the letter you will rejoice you will rejoice exultantly in glory you and i we will have to suffer let's know this we will have to carry a cross we will have to because we are living in a broken world the two thieves they carried a cross each the one on the left the one on the right but the cross of the good thief shines in the glory of the cross of Christ right the cross of the other thief is damned because he did not he did not turn to the lord the good thief turned to the lord and the lord took him to paradise his cross glows in the glory of the resurrection it depends on you and me where we want where we want to place our cross on the left or on the right if i place my cross by the side of jesus and turn to him our crosses will not destroy us will not break us our crosses will take us to the glory of the resurrection hallelujah hallelujah there is assurance given to us by the cross of jesus after the death and resurrection of jesus our crosses will take us to the glory of the lord the divine thought the divine thought of suffering you know my dear sisters and brothers the human thought when sufferings come our way uh, we blame others there could be there could be daughters in law sitting here very angry with the mothers in law are there mothers in law even today yes yes well um, daughters in law blaming the mothers in law that old woman that old woman made my life miserable angry there could be wives angry with the husbands husbands angry with the wives i blame on someone it is because of him it's because of her that i am suffering today i become angry a human way a devilish way of looking at suffering a suffering that turns us to satan there are others when they have to suffer they blame themselves they blame themselves it's because of my sin because of my sin that i'm suffering god is punishing me and when they blame themselves they become guilty they become desperate they become depressed that leads them to self destruction what happened to judas again a devilish way suffering leads us to depression and despair a devilish way there are others who blame the ancestors have you heard this ancestral curse for us who believe in jesus who are baptized in jesus is there a thing called ancestral curse st paul said no romans 8:1 romans 8:1 if you are in christ jesus if you are baptized in christ jesus you are not under a curse shall we say praise the lord for that hallelujah hallelujah you are not under a curse no curse can ever come to us who are baptized in jesus christ all the curses the lord has taken upon himself all these are human thoughts human thoughts that will lead us to the devil the one divine thought what jesus said take up your cross and follow me i will take you through calvary through calvary to the glory of the resurrection and that's what simon peter tells us you know simon peter 
who tried to dissuade Jesus from the cross, Simon Peter was totally changed, totally changed when the Holy Spirit came upon him. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came upon him. He was a changed person. His thoughts were completely changed. And that is what we read First Peter chapter 4, chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Peter said, rejoice, rejoice when sufferings come your way. The one word that occurs in the New Testament all the time when it comes to suffering. St. Paul speaks about it all the time. Philippians 1.29, Philippians 1.29, Colossians 1 24 rejoice when sufferings come your way James James chapter 1 verse 2 rejoice the one word connected with suffering is rejoicing the most positive attitude to suffering for us for us who are followers of the crucified Lord the one attitude to suffering is rejoicing because Jesus has defeated the power of sin and suffering. And therefore, when sufferings come our way, we can afford to rejoice because I know my suffering will not break me, will not destroy me, but will lead me to the glory of the resurrection. Rejoice. Why rejoice? Because Simon Peter tells us, it is a share. My suffering is a share I am given in the cross of Jesus. A share in the cross of Jesus. What does that mean? Concretely, what does that mean? Say, I am misunderstood. All of us are misunderstood. I said something casually. I said something casually to my wife, to my husband. To my friend he or she took it very serious and she's offended he's offended and shouted at me i was angry i shouted back and there's a fight there's a quarrel i am very hurt she's very hurt he's very hurt there's a mental anguish i don't sleep she's not she does not sleep there's a problem where should i make myself stand where should I make myself stand? I am misunderstood. I am condemned. Often we are condemned. Where do I make myself stand? I must make myself stand in praetorium. Praetorium at the judgment seat of Pilate. That's where Jesus was made to stand. In shame, right? The false witnesses shouting against him all atrocities and Pilate condemning him again and again Pilate said this man is innocent but finally condemned him pronounced the most unjust condemnation go and crucify him oh judge why a question we ask often why why Jesus stood there, misunderstood, shouted at, despised, condemned, a sword piercing his heart. There I make myself stand with Jesus. I am also called. I am also chosen. I am also chosen to share the pain of Jesus. The pain of Jesus, a pain of being misunderstood, a pain of being condemned. I'm given a share in that agony of Jesus. Is that a curse or a glory? What do you think? A glory. Shall we say praise the Lord for that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And therefore, Every pain, every suffering, whether a mental anguish 
or a physical pain every suffering i must connect with the crucified lord at that moment i'm not alone i'm not alone i am with my jesus there's a pain intense pain intense pain on my hand on my hand an intense pain i must reach my hand out i must place my hand on the wood of the cross on my hand i will feel the hand of jesus placed a nail driven into the hand of jesus that nail goes from the hand of jesus into my hand my hand is burning with pain but there is the hand of jesus on my hand the same nail going through the hand of jesus and my hand of course my hand is shivering shivering with pain but but also the hand of jesus shivering with pain it is a terrible pain but a pain i share with the hand of jesus is it a curse or is it a call it's a call to share to be one with jesus remember i was called to pray for a young man for a young man dying of blood cancer i went uh, to say mass in that convent uh, convent attached to the hospital and the sisters told me there's a young man by name savio dying of blood cancer this man is dying the whole body is in pain terrible pain i said oh sure i would want to go and pray with him and i was walking towards his room i was wondering what am i going to tell him a young man before he started living he's dying what am i going to tell him to console him and before i got any thought in my mind i was already there at the door of the room i entered the room all tubes and and bottles hanging around machines on the wall and through the tubes and the bottles i saw this young man smiling calling me <clears throat> by name sisters that told him father augustine is coming to pray for you and he called me father augustine please come i was so shocked no complaints on that face he was smiling and i held his hand i held his hand um, doctors say we are not supposed to sit on the bed of a sick person like that right i died i sat there i held his hand i asked him savio how are you i knew it was it was a very meaningless question but what to ask what to say to a man whose life is just just escaping from his hands from his body he smiled and said father it's so wonderful to lie here with jesus by my side i was dumbfounded i, I didn't know what to say again all my in all my theology that i had studied i had never i had never studied a theology like this and i didn't know what else to say i asked him savio is it hurting is your body hurting i knew a, a, a foolish question sisters told me this man is bearing a lot of pain he said father it's terrible pain father suddenly his face changed 
terrible pain, Father. Uh, pain begins at times in my in my hands, and it it just it it just moves on, moves on, and all my body is in terrible pain. And he said, Father, but suddenly he smiled again. For a moment, the smile had vanished. Suddenly he smiled again, Father, but I have a great comfort. The hand of my Jesus is always on my hand. The leg of my Jesus is always on my leg. I can feel the touch of my Jesus. I don't know whether he was quoting First Peter 4.13, but he said, I'm sharing in the cross of Jesus. My Jesus is crucified with me. I don't know whether he was quoting St. Paul. I am sharing in the cross of Jesus. Shall we say praise the Lord for this? Hallelujah. 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 When there is a physical pain, when there is a physical pain, a pain in my body, I must make myself stand at the pillar at which Jesus was tied and flogged. Every cell of his body was bruised and burning with pain. And there I must make myself stand. I am given the privilege, privilege of giving a share in the pain of Jesus. A share. Another big question, why the share? Why the share? is being given to me. Jesus said it. Why the share is being given to me. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Verses 1 on verse Jesus said, I am the vine. I am the vine. You are the branches. I am the vine. You are the branches. I want you to bear fruit. I want you to bear fruit. What are the fruits that Jesus speaks about? The fruits of the Holy Spirit, Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, verses 23 onwards. The fruits of love and peace and joy and patience and kindness and goodness and self-control. The fruits of the Holy Spirit in order to bear fruit. What should happen, Jesus said, in order to bear fruit? What will the Father do? Jesus said. What will the Father do? The Father would come to the vineyard and prune. Pruning process. There's a pruning process. Only if the branches are pruned, only if the branches are pruned, here is a branch, healthy, thriving. The Father will cut it. Cut it. Because it is not needed for the branch to thrive and become big. It will not bear fruit. In order a branch to bear fruit, it should not grow wild. It is to be pruned. I will be pruned. Pruning process. Every suffering is a pruning process. And in the book, letter to Hebrews, there's another word used, a spiritual discipline. Let me read that for you, a spiritual discipline. Um, and, and it is so beautifully explained in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when disciplined by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, he scourges every son, he acknowledges, endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? 
that is hebrews chapter 12 verses 5 6 and 7 disciplining process disciplining and and said paul says god the father disciplined even his own son jesus christ hebrews chapter 2 hebrews chapter 2 verse 10 for it was fitting that he for whom and through whom all things exist in bringing many children to glory should make the leader to the, their salvation perfect through suffering through suffering even jesus was spiritually disciplined suffering of jesus is looked at as a spiritual disciplining the father disciplining us there's a girl nearby here Usha, PT Usha, have you heard of this girl? She went, she ran for Olympics. She got a medal. A few, a couple of years ago, uh, her uh, mentor, Nambiar, Mr. Nambiar, died, and Usha was in tears. And, uh, and, and the, the TV people asked her, Usha, uh, why are you so sad? Usha said, it is this man who made me an Olympian. He would make me wake up early morning, three o'clock, and run and run and run. If I lose my track, I would have to run double that day. I would imagine he's so cruel, so cruel, but he disciplined me. I could get an Olympic medal. Disciplining, every disciplining is painful, but it is for a glory. But it's something very beautiful. The word of God does not say punishing. No. What's the difference between punishment and disciplining? Both are painful. Punishment and discipline. Punishment go, looks to the past. To the past. I made a mistake. Now I am punished. No. Suffering is not punishment. Suffering is disciplining. Disciplining look to the future, to the glory. It's a medal, a gold medal ahead. Disciplining looks to the future. We are being disciplined. Disciplined. And St. Paul spoke about it so beautifully. St. Paul spoke about it so beautifully. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. Not only, St. Paul says, not only that, but even we boast. Look at that, the way St. Paul looks at it, suffering. We boast, we boast of our afflictions. When afflictions come our way, we boast, knowing that sufferings produce endurance, and endurance produce proven character, and proven character produce hope, a hope that does not disappoint, a hope that does not disappoint. It's a maturing process. Suffering is a maturing process, making us mature. There's a process, and God is behind it. We are being made mature, a hope that does not that does not disappoint us. And St. James speaks about it. James chapter 1, verse 2. James chapter 1, verse 2. Consider it all joy. Consider it all joy, my brothers, when you encounter various trials. For you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let the perseverance be perfect so that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing it takes courage when someone shouts at me when someone misunderstands me when there's a pain when i am demoted in my office when someone when someone um, uh, rejects me <clears throat> of course it's painful it's painful but to come to the lord and tell him, Lord, I praise you. I don't understand this. Why? But I know your hand is behind this. Your hand is behind this. You are making me mature in faith. This is a maturing process. You are disciplining me. You are giving me a share. 
like heavenly father jesus like the heavenly father made you mature as the savior discipline you the heavenly father is disciplining me by giving me a share in your suffering to make me a cause savior ah, jesus was made a savior and and the heavenly father wants to make me a cause savior yeah.